Hi, my name is Matt Goodrich and I'm a helicopter instrument flight instructor. This video is about ADSB and it's made in conjunction with Cleveland Helicopter Services and Pilot in Command LLC. You can schedule your helicopter flight training via the link seen here or they're also available in the description below. ADSB is a modern approach to position reporting, providing various benefits as part of the FAA's next-gen airspace overhaul program, which is making America's air transportation system even safer, more efficient, and more predictable. Before ADSB, other forms of tracking existed, such as radar. Radar stands for radio detection and ranging. With radar, an antenna shoots out or transmits electromagnetic waves, and these waves bounce off an object and return to usually the same antenna. A processor then determines properties of the object. Primary properties include distance and location, and secondary functions include uh, altitude, speeds, ground track, and more. For example, if a wave bounces back or echoes after one second, then the processor and ATC can tell that the object that it bounced off of is closer than in another object that took two seconds for the echo to come back. A common ATC radar display shows circles with distance from some center, usually a tower, and an overlaid image of aircraft and various properties, such as altitude, like we talked about. Imagine ATC sees this helicopter and airplane on a collision course. They could order Helicopter 23 Victor turn right 30 degrees and avoid the accident. ATSB provides the same benefits and more. To understand ADSB, we can break down the acronym. First, we have A, which stands for automatic. Aircraft with ADSB out will automatically transmit their position 12 times more often than radar usually detects. D stands for dependent. Aircraft using ADSB out require a high integrity position source, which could be WASP GPS. S stands for surveillance. ADSB provides a radar like surveillance for ATC to have aircraft position. B stands for broadcast. The aircraft broadcasts its position, info, and a unique ID. The position info includes latitude, longitude, altitude, velocity, and more. The broadcast travels from both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground, which we'll discuss next. So let's take a look at an example system using ADS-B. We'll have a helicopter with only ADS-B out, an airplane with only ADS-B in, a satellite, an ATC tower, and an ATC ground station. The D in ADSB was dependent, and the helicopter with ADSB will depend on our satellite for position information. The B in ADSB was broadcast, and the helicopter will broadcast its position from both air to air and air to ground. The ATC ground station receives the air to ground signal, which is relayed to the ATC tower. The controller can now see the aircraft's position. The air-to-air -air signal reaches the air airplane's ADS-B in receiver. The pilot of the airplane can see the helicopter's position on their in-flight display. The in-flight display that you would see in this airplane looks similar to an ATC radar. For example, I use ForeFlight with a Sentry ADS-B in receiver, and I'm able to see an updated picture of other aircraft with ADS-B out. In uncontrolled airspace, I can then play the role of ATC for myself and especially flying airplanes and aircraft with less visibility outside, it's helped me avoid collisions with traffic out of my view, um, such as when they're to the side or below. It should just be used as an aid to situational awareness, and you should still be scanning and clearing the area before maneuvers, um, but it, it's really helpful. Other information is sent from the ground station to the airplane, including weather. My handheld GPS shows me weather like radar and satellite in flight, and I've adjusted my flight path even using this information. The FAA has published regulations for the use of ADS-B out, and they can be found in Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations under Part 91.225, which you can find in a FAR AIM, which is also available online. And the acronym I use to remember ADS-B out requirements is ABC, ABC, 1CG and that expands to Alpha Bravo Charlie, Above Bravo Charlie, 10,000 MSL, Mode C, Golf. ADSB out is required in Class Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie airspaces, 
It's also required above class Bravo and Charlie airspace. It's required in class Echo airspace above 10,000 MSL, excluding below 2,500 AGL. It's required within mode C veils, which have a 30 nautical mile radius of primary class Bravo airports. And lastly, it's required in class Echo airspace over the Gulf of Mexico, above 3,000 MSL and within 12 nautical miles of the U.S. coast. Now, unlike ADS-B out, there aren't requirements for ADS-B in, but it is highly recommended. If you're flying frequently, it'll definitely pay off um, from helping you choose more efficient routes uh, to avoiding aircraft damage or even preventing a mid-air collision, which could save your life. Uh, I definitely personally recommend it. ADS-B offers a wide range of benefits. Updates are considered real-time, providing ATC and pilots with more accurate pictures of traffic. And with a clear picture, ATC predictability increases, so their separation can decrease. Departure and arrival times decrease, and environmental impact decreases. FISB gives general aviation pilots free weather. Operators can track their own fleets. Surveillance has become available in remote and inhospitable areas, such as Alaska, mountainous areas, or the Gulf. It assists with increased congestion and general safety is increased. And lastly, uh, search and rescue has more accurate last position info. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at matt at pilotincommand.llc. That, as well as my website, are in the description. I'm available for helicopter ground and flight training at any level. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and good luck with your flying.